Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I am the author of GMATHacks.com, as well as several GMAT textbooks, including Total GMAT Math. And today I want to walk you through one of the fundamental concepts discussed in that book, overlapping sets. This is not something that you probably learned about in high school algebra or in more advanced math classes. It's more of a common sense kind of math that most people never really learn uh, concrete techniques to apply to. So overlapping sets means we have multiple groups that have some overlap and there might be people who aren't in any groups. So this is better understood in terms of an example. I've written some parameters up on the board here. So let me tell you what this represents. Let's say we have a bunch of students in school. Um, 12 of them are majoring in math. 18 of them are majoring in science. Seven of them are majoring in both math and science. So those are double majors. 20 of them are majoring in neither math nor science. So maybe they're English majors, maybe they're drama majors, who knows what they're doing. And the question would ask, what's the total? Now, this sounds pretty simple. Um, maybe it is to you, but we need to be able to very concretely show how to get to the answer. And in this short video today, I'm gonna walk you through three methods to get there. These methods can be useful to different people at different times, and hopefully by looking at all three, you'll get a good, well-rounded perspective of how these questions work. So the first tactic I'm gonna show you is the Venn diagram. This is probably something you've seen before. I'm drawing two overlapping ovals. Each one is gonna represent one of the majors in this case. So this is math, this is science, this overlap right here in the middle, those are people who majored in both math and science, and we could have, we could put a border around it to show the entire universe of students in this school. So we know that there's none, 20, they aren't in either the math or the science ovals, but we can start plugging in these numbers. The math we know is 12, that relates to this oval. The science is 18, that's the right-hand oval. And math and science together, that's seven. So we can use the diagram to help us do some of the necessary math. If there are 12 math majors and seven people are doing both, that means there are five that are just doing math. Five and seven, that's the 12 in this oval. If there are 18 science majors and seven overlap, that's 11. 11 and seven gives us 18. So we can put all this together. We have five math onlys, seven math and science, 11 science only, 20 nuns, 20 plus 11 plus seven plus five. That gives us 43. That's our total. So in this case, that's pretty straightforward. We were able to just identify each one of these segments add them all together, and best of all, we have a visual representation. Now sometimes, as questions get more complicated, this can be more difficult. Let's say we were given the total and had to work backwards to the number of math onlys, or the number of total math majors. Then it can get more complicated. Another thing I don't like about the Venn diagram approach is that it can get vague what these numbers mean, the 12 and the 5. If you put a 5 here, the way I just did it, the 5 represents the math onlys, the math on the left side of the center overlapping part. But some people look at a Venn diagram and they think this five refers to the whole oval. There's no really good graphical way of representing that, so that's why I don't prefer this method. But if you really like visual representations, maybe the Venn diagram is right for you. So that's the Venn diagram. The second approach is an equation that does pretty much the exact same thing. The equation is the total is equal to group one plus group two minus both plus neither. Group one is in this case math majors, group two science majors, both is the overlap, neither are the people who aren't represented in either one of the sets. So in this case the math is very straightforward, 12 plus 18 minus 7 plus 20. Hopefully that gets us back to 43 again, and it does. And the only difference here between what we're looking at and what we just did with the Venn diagram is how we're dealing with this seven. In the Venn diagram, we figured out how many math onlys and how many science onlys there were. That's a perfectly valid mathematical approach, but this is a different way of looking at it. What we're doing here is saying the math and the science together is 30, 12 plus 18. But those 30, call them student majors, those 30 units of student majors represent fewer than 30 students. 
because some students have more than one major. So what we're saying here is that seven of those students have been double counted. If I majored in both math and science, I would have been counted once in the 12 and once in the 18. But that doesn't mean I'm two students. I'm just one student. So this minus both eliminates the overlap for us. Then we add on the 20 to tack on the people who aren't counted as math majors or science majors. This is a powerful equation, even though it's fairly simple. Memorize it, use it in straightforward examples like this. The only downside is that there's no terms for math only or group one only, as we saw in the Venn diagram. There's a way to kind of back into it, but it's not very straightforward. And if you do see a question with group one only, math only, science only, that sort of term, this is probably not your best approach. And that is a good segue to take us into the third and most powerful approach, and that is a table. The table looks like this, kind of like a tic-tac-toe board on steroids. You're gonna draw three vertical lines, three horizontal lines, and up here, you're gonna put one of the groups. This is people who are in math, people who are not math majors, science majors, not science. Now the magic of this table is that these four squares in here represent overlaps or intersections between these columns and rows. So right here we have people who are science majors and math majors. Right here, people who are science majors but not math majors. As we move over to the rightmost column and the bottommost row, we can start totaling those things. So this is a total column. This is all the science majors, all the not science majors. Down here, all the math majors, all the people who aren't math majors. This is everybody, the total of the totals. So everything sums down and it sums across. So let's work this out. Total math majors is 12. Math total, 12. Total science majors is 18. Science total, 18. Math and science is seven. None, that's people who aren't math and aren't science, that's 20. And we're looking for the total down in the right hand corner. All it takes now is a little arithmetic. So if seven plus this equals 18, we know science, not math, is 11. Right here, seven plus this has to equal 12. That gives us five. Now we can start summing across and summing down. Not science, five and 20, gives us 25. Not math, 11 and 20, gives us 31. And finally, we can sum across, 12 plus 31 equals 43. Or if we had wanted, 18 plus 25 is 43. And once again, we get to the same answer. Three approaches, depending on the scenario, it'll take a little practice to figure out which is the best or the most comfortable for you. This is the most powerful, but as we've seen, it took a few more steps. So on the simpler questions, if you like the Venn diagram, use the Venn diagram, use the equation. But as they get more complicated, maybe there are variables involved, maybe you're searching for something like the number of science majors who aren't math majors, for instance, the table will always work, even if it takes a few extra steps. So lots of stuff for you to work with there. Definitely spend some time practicing. Check out the articles at gmathacks.com, and I'll see you next time.